The following drama is based on the true story of Patrick Moore and the making of The Sky at Night. All true, even the stuff I exaggerated to jolly up the proceedings. However, I do apologize for my restraint on more colorful opinions, PC Brigade, Europhiles and all that. Damn irritating. Countdown to live in 90. Ident, please. Sky at night, program 1, 24, 4, 57, 10.30 p.m. Transmission, do you have a feed? Hello, studio. Rolling credits on Cyril Stapleton Parade. Live in 60. Good luck, studio. Good luck, Patrick. My entire life depends on what I do in the next 15 minutes, Paul. Longer than it took to create the universe. Yeah, this is slightly more important, Patrick. In 55 years' time, our neighbours in the least 200 star system will just be receiving the first ever Sky at Night broadcast. Beta Cassiopeia is only 45 light years away. They'll already know whether we were a success or not. Let's not disappoint our viewers in the rest of the galaxy. Of course, even though they certainly don't pay their television licence. <laughs> Live in 30, 29, The Sky at Night all began in earnest, well, anger, in 56. Just as Comet Aaron Rowland came blustering into our solar system, spitting fire and ice, I was also preparing my own elemental energy across the breakfast table in the form of hot tea. Uh, oh, what the? Don't gulp. Yeah. I can't breathe. No. Undo your tie. I can't. Uh, no, and please do stop the amateur dramatics, uh, Patrick. At least until after breakfast. But how would you react to this appalling review, Mother? With his forced visual images and vague generalities, author Patrick Moore is flirting with science. In Suns, Myths and Men, this amateur astronomer sows the seeds of irrationality. Not very glowing. It's an assassination. No, a coup d'etat by one of my own from the British Astronomical Association. It's that serpent, Dr. Henry King, my arch enemy. <laughs> Another one? I'll be ruined. Worse, I'll have to return to teaching. Does anybody actually read the BAA journal? Only everyone and anyone in astronomy. I should thrash the man at tomorrow's meeting. Uh, you're not your father, dear. It's about time I was. There are men of action and those of intelligence. I need a stick. <gasps> it's started. Which serpent is on the blower ready to strike while I'm weak? Probably the Serpent King himself. East Grinstead, 13753. Good morning. Oh, you've read it. Right. Take Father's gun down now and put me out of my misery. Really? We'll do it in the garden so we shan't distress the cats. Uh, he may be in his study. Are you in? Is it King? Are you Henry King? This is from the BBC. The BAA, Mother. Mr Paul Johnston. Is he sure? Are you... Uh, 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 yes, he says he's quite sure and wishes to speak to the author of Sons, Myths and Men. Hell's teeth, Mother, it's gone national. The BBC must know about that damn Martian book. Mm. I'm doubly ruined. You may have to shoot me twice. Uh, he's coming to the phone. Hello. Look here, Mr Johnson from the BBC. Is that Patrick Moore, author of Sun, Myths and Men? What's this about? Oh, congratulations on a terrific read. Did Dr King put you up to this? I don't know Dr King, but I do know your book is a page-turner. I'm a television producer, and I think your book has legs. Legs? Oh, uh, apologies for the strange analogy. It seems to be the buzzword here. It's the BBC. Buzzword. That's what I said. I'm looking for an astronomer who can talk space science, but also sort of bring it... Bring it to life? Exactly. Enthuse the audience to rise up from their armchairs and explore the vast universe waiting to be discovered like an open box of jewels? But that's it. Even with binoculars, they can witness meteors blasting our atmosphere, Galilean moons waltzing around Jupiter, a dark and beautiful sea of knowledge that connects us through time to the whirlpool of creation. Do you know what, Patrick? I think my search could be over. Have you heard of a chap called George Adamski? The day had gone well. Good fortune from the ashes. He's invited me to talk on the television. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> the cats are also excited. Ness and Orma was a fitting song to celebrate with. I accompanied on the piano. We were very close, Mother and I. Homeschooled me on account of my dicky ticker. Gave me my first book on astronomy. Father was never interested. I was the wrong son for a World War I hero who couldn't understand why his only child wanted to spend his days in books and his nights looking at the stars. 
Some armchair psychologist will probably read something painfully meaningful in all that. Our Father who art in heaven, etc. That serpent, Dr. Henry King, reminds me a little of Father. Athletic, strong, patronizing. I'm sure irritating armchair psychologists will set great store by that too. If you do, keep it yourself. I would like to draw your attention to the recent sighting of Aaron Rowland. I didn't take a stick to the BAA meeting, but I kept my brolly handy. My scientist friend, Arthur Clarke, was there. Clever chap. Invented geosynchronous satellites. You may recognize the name from his science fiction writing. He adds a C to sound more fanciful. Perhaps that's the kind of thing one does coming from Minehead. I concur, Arthur. I caught sight of the new comet at 2.03 a.m. Father and I managed this rudimentary drawing. Uh, admittedly, it was very hazy. And cold. <laughs> Percy Wilkins and his daughter Eileen were also present. Correction, his beautiful daughter. Rudimentary, indeed. I suppose I should mention the fact that he was there. Did anyone capture a more professional representation? Even the very mention of his name turns my stomach. Yes, <clears throat> the serpent Henry King. Not just amateur renderings? I would advise the association that the word amateur is at the core of the BAA's ethos. Some members should consider whether their own approach is best served here. It's quite all right, Patrick. There's no need to... And on that note, I would like to draw everyone's attention to the literary review in this month's journal. Is this really the time and place, Mr. President? In which Dr. King posits that my latest book is Flirting with Science and Sowing the Seeds of Irrationality. Please, Mr. Moore. I realise I haven't spent eight years labouring over my book, but that does not mean it has less value scientifically than his doorstep. Her, the history of the telescope. It took ten. How long did your book take? A year? Alas, I am forced to write at 5,000 words per day to make a living since I don't have the luxury of a publicly funded university lectureship. 5,000 words a day? I'm sure the facts find it difficult to keep up. <laughs> if it's amusement Dr King is seeking, perhaps it will amuse him to know that my book inspired the BBC to invite me onto a television programme to discuss astronomy. You? Really, Patrick? Well done, old man. Producer Paul Johnstone said my book has legs. What's that? Patrick's book has legs, Father. Oh, can I get some on mine? Father, shush. Sure. <laughs> the BBC clearly recognised that the communication of science is as important as the stats. It took three, by the way. Three months. In playing at science, one can, like playing with fire, get burnt. And Mr Moore, however slightly, keeps burning himself. Perhaps that is what interests the BBC, to see him burn on the television. Gentlemen, I must call an end to this meeting. Thank you for your attendance. Good night. Bloody serpent. Is that true, Pat? Most certainly is true. It was nice to wipe the smile from the serpent. Very entertaining. Come on, old man. We might just make the 10.30 and I've got a bottle of bread to cushion the journey. Bye, Patrick. Yes, lovely to... Toodaloo, Eileen. The chap who wrote this will be riveting in the talk show, but there's so much more potential. I'm not sure, Paul. Isn't it all old men with long white beards? Same again? Uh, this is on you or the department? No, don't be silly. Same again, Charlie. Stick it on the talks tab. Look. Astronomy's millions of miles up there, i.e. not very televisual. This him on the back cover? Yes. A monocle? How ancient is he? 33. He's worn it since he was 16. Yes, he's a little eccentric. Hmm. Read this. Frankie looks up. When Helen said he wanted to pitch an astronomy series, I remembered Percy Lamp sent me this. That new producer, friend of Frankie Howard. Watch the country's favourite comedian explore space with his assistant, blonde bombshell Sabrina. Frankie and saucy Sabrina actually pitched it to Chairman Jacobs himself. The DG? Over dinner at Claridge's, with Alma Cogan singing the theme Frankie's Big Telescope. <laughs> You're joking. <clears throat> You're not. Please say he didn't go for it. The DG hated it, but he said there was potential in astronomy, just not silly. But more isn't silly. He's compelling and steeped in knowledge. He's discovered craters on the moon. He published his first paper at 13. Ran the Hanbury Observatory from 14. Look, let's see how your monocle does on the talk programme next week. 